Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. Coming up, a nice, big, modern traditional from Rosecraft. We're going to take a look at a new knife from me by T. Kell. So excited about that. And then a long look at my full tang favorites. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Lots of comments this week, lots of great ones, uh, but this one uh, really uh, gave me a good idea. And this is from Trent Costello on a, a past Knife Junkie podcast. This was Favorite Knives of 2022 from right around January. And he says, I wish you had a fixed blade channel and a dumb folder channel. Everything I start watching, I leave because of the note. So I know I miss some cool fixed blades, but not worth watching. Folder. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I know what he's saying here. And he's getting at the fact that he loves fixed blade knives and folders to him um, are not interesting. And seeing this at first, I was like, um, well, doesn't everyone love everything? I mean, and then I realized not everyone is a knife junkie. Um, you know, some people have more specific tastes. And this made me think that I would love to do a show and, and maybe it'll be next week about variety being the spice of life. And, and this is, uh, me saying to Mr. Costello, Yes, but have you considered and then show him some of the real wide variety of the stuff I have in my collection and uh, part of I've been wanting to do that for a while, but this really kind of put the fire uh, under my under my feet to do so just to show off how um, some of us are knife users and we only have the need for a fixed blade knife. Maybe we camp a lot. Maybe Mr. Costello camps a lot and, and sees no need for uh, for folders. Uh, but to me, it's such a wide, beautiful world of edge tools and and whether they're weapons or tools or or pocket jewelry, uh, there's a lot of great stuff to appreciate. So I hope uh, I hope Trent takes a look at the uh, variety is the spice of life episode that'll be uh, coming shortly to see, you know, even some of this historical stuff on the wall uh, behind me is worth having. You don't have to have a ton of them, but, um, you know, to really immerse yourself in the hobby of knife collecting. Yeah, maybe he'd be interested. So Trent, that one will go out to you, sir. Thank you for commenting. And thank you one and all for watching and commenting. It's greatly, greatly appreciated. You know, uh, this past weekend, I had a date night with my wife, uh, which was great. We don't have the opportunity to do that too much. And actually, it came from losing a bet. Um, I was so sure about something and it had to do with an actor slash celebrity. And I should, I should have known years ago, you never start an argument about that particular topic with my wife, but I, I claimed a certain actor wasn't something and she swore up and down and I was like, I know you're wrong. She said, let's make a bet date night. You set it up. And, uh, well, she pulled out the Google later and I lost immediately. We ended up going to this great theater and seeing a second run of everything, every everything all the time all at once uh oscar winning movie and man it does live up to its name it's uh it was quite chaotic and um well i thought i'd get more out of it than i did and on the way home i said you know there was this movie uh playing at the same theater called 65 where adam driver stumbles upon a planet full of dinosaurs and she was like yeah we should have seen that and i thought man i married the right woman. I think that at least once a day and, and date night proved it this weekend. Uh, so everything all at once. Uh, curious to see what other people think of that movie. Anyway, uh, all that being said, I think it's time for a pocket check. Today in my front right pocket i had the beautiful dirk pinkerton designed night horse this is the asymmetrical version uh, asymmetrical is their uh, mid-tier line uh the beyond edc mid-tier line and um, i find this to be 
a really beautiful modern interpretation of the classic Spanish Navaja. Uh, I have the uh, G10 version, which is outstanding. It's a great, great knife. It's G10 and 14C28N, and it's only 30 bucks. But I could not pass up the opportunity to get this beauty right here. This uh, was uh, from a prototype sale that Dirk Pinkerton uh, did. And uh, I, I really always wanted to get the titanium version and uh, did so when he when the offer popped up. And man, I do love this knife. Um, so carried this one today. And uh, this had cut. Uh, I used this to cut a big loaf of the Boudin's uh, bread. I keep talking about that sourdough bread. Uh, this just sort of powered through it with that long uh, four inch plus blade. Um, yeah, it wasn't a, a street fight to reclaim my honor uh, as Navajas were originally used once swords were unavailable and illegal to the average Spanish citizen. Um, but it did it did vanquish uh, the bread quite well. So uh, happy to have that in my pocket today. I also carried uh, the beautiful the beautiful Venom Jack by Jack Wolf Knives uh, with that gorgeous. Uh, blue lava carbon fiber um, by I think this is by uh, this is one of the camo carbons just a beautiful knife with that um, this is s90 V high height full height uh, worn cliff uh, uh, hollow ground worn cliff blade just astoundingly beautiful and a great great cutter and I love the tip down uh, the the worn cliff tip is naturally going to be down there. Uh, but I love the downward rake of the edge, really kind of pushes materials into the cut and puts the tip in an even more uh, convenient spot. I love this knife. I uh, hadn't carried in it in a little while because I've been focused on the Javelina Jack, uh, which is, by the way, a great cigar cutter. Um, I know I need to get a cigar cutter, legit one, but um, these Jack Wolf knives are so thin and so nice. They do the job really, really well. So I had that in my front uh, pocket as well, front left pocket for most of the day. Changed it up a little bit uh, with the uh, fixed blade carry. And today, uh, instead of the Nova 1, I had the 1558 um, Revere on me from the 1558 Knife Company. Uh, this is Josh Fisher. He's a uh, master smith, master blade smith, and... Um, I got this at Blade Show 2022. Love this knife. That recurve is beautiful. Um, I don't carry it as much as I should. Um, I, I find I find uh, that that um, my um, hog tooth knives are frequently kicking everything else out of the belt. This one is great because of that thin handle and it's rounded at the top, so it doesn't uh, poke poke the ribs or or the uh, or the spare tire and. I love the recurve blade. The one thing that stops me from carrying this uh, all the time is the fact that the sheath, which is really nice, is just a little too tight. Uh, but I, I have been trying to work work it out and you know put the knife in, pull it out, put it in, pull it out, and and uh, sort of loosen it up that way. And that, that's been working pretty well. Last up for emotional support uh, today, I had the. Rockwall by Tactile Knives. Uh, this is an early um, re review copy there. You can see the RS on the blade there. That's review and uh, review sample, I guess that stands for. But just a beautiful knife. It flips so nicely. That milling is outstanding and uh, was very, very happy to have this in the pocket today. I haven't carried this one in a little while. A great, great cutter. I love the swedge on this. Uh, it's, it's got a, 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 an aggressive drop point. If, if such a thing exists, uh, it exists right here on that knife. You know, I always talk about drop points being kind of, you know, uh, the, the all arounder and frequently they don't seem too aggressive to me, but something about that knife and the point of it, uh, really make for a, a an aggressive knife, uh, small enough to fit in an old Wrigley's five stick gum pack. Uh, is is the rock wall. And uh, I think that's a cool design requirement that they had for that. So that's what I had in my pocket. I had the uh, the tactile rock wall. I had the 1558 Revere, Revere, 
got to say it like that review uh i had the beautiful jack wolf knives um venom jack these things i gotta say are fingerprint magnets that does drive me a little bit nuts from time to time definitely not a deal breaker and then the uh the night horse uh by asymmetrical um also want to remind you that the nova one pre-order is live uh it's I, we have a good uh amount of knives going out and i'm excited about that uh it is live for a uh until the 31st of march and uh we stop at 50 or march 31st so um get on it now all you got to do is go to the knife junkie.com slash nova one i've been posting a lot of little love letter videos to that knife uh the other day i was uh, driving through the parking lot at work rushing back to work and i saw a nice patch of sun i had to stop pull out and uh, show off how beautiful the uh, burgundy micarta is in the sunlight so hope you got to check that out um get on it the nova one do you want to, do you want an edc pocket bowie i think you do uh made 100 in america by matt chase of hogtooth knives up there in massachusetts check it out all right still to come on the knife junkie podcast we're going to take a look at some knife life news and then we'll hit up the state of the collection stand by if you're a knife junkie you're always in the market for a new knife and we've got you covered for the latest weekly knife deals be sure to visit the knife slash knives through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. I love how many times we hear the word knife in this podcast. Uh, okay, so as is sort of par for the course lately, Rosecraft has another knife out. And um, yeah, I've been liking the look of some of these unique uh, slip joints. But this one, to me, just takes the cake. It is really damn cool. It's called the Castoria, and it's designed by Andy Armstrong, one of their founders over there at Rosecraft. And this is a true blend of traditional and modern. First of all, we look at it, we see all the traditional stylings of a Barlow with the uh, with the really nice spear point blade, bellied spear point blade, and then we have the uh, the faux bolster, which is a, a pretty nice large uh, Barlow style bolster and the shield. And then we see what is that thing protruding from the ricasso of that blade? Yes, it's a flipper, and that thing just uh, northeast of the pivot. Yes, that is a button lock. Uh, so this is their second button lock. The first one also designed by Andy Armstrong called the Skink. Um, yeah, the Skink. Uh, but this this one is, that's that's a four-inch blade. That's a 3.9-inch blade on this sucker. I, I'm compelled by this one. This one is the first Rosecraft that, um, I don't know, I don't know. I, I, I really think it's a successful marriage of the contemporary and the and the traditional so i i'm i'm really looking forward to checking this one out uh, i say that every time i talk about rosecraft but this time i mean it uh so at blade show if i if this isn't in my hot little hands before blade show i will definitely be stalking the rosecraft um table just to check everything out because i've, I've looked at all the designs and we've talked about them here and uh they are interesting and they are compelling but this one is um this one definitely, I think, is the same but different. This one really does do something new, so I want to check this out. Uh, that's called the Castoria by Rosecraft, and I have on my notes here, yes. So, yes to the Castoria. Next up, um, uh, you know, a resounding yes to Spyderco, especially lately for me, uh, having gotten the lightweight S110 um, uh, in in my in my hands here the uh the manix uh, this is the lightweight version of the little native uh we saw the native chief come out uh, and get the lightweight treatment uh, these are all announcements from the amsterdam meet meetup and this is where we hear about well, what's going to be new from spider co and uh as if it needed it the little the little native has gotten the lightweight treatment now the little native has always been pretty lightweight 
because it's so darn small. Um, it's had a compression lock version. It's had a slip joint version. And now it will be coming out in its classic and original lockback uh, in terms of the lock. But it will have the bi-directional FRN texturing. It will have the loop over wire pocket clip. And um, this will be S30V. That's a 2.45 inch blade and um, 1.55 ounces. So barely there. A barely there, but super capable knife from Spyderco. Man, I, I, we're all, I, I don't know. I'm grateful that they exist. Uh, Spyderco, even though sometimes uh, I haven't paid much attention to them, it's good knowing they're there, that they're an American company, that they're making a lot of stuff in America and uh, just just great knives. And the thing that I keep hearing from those who know, uh, no one no one he treats their steels like Spyderco. And uh, as far as I see, no one no one innovates with steels as much as Spyderco. They're always coming out with something new and um, putting the latest and greatest steels on their knives, which I appreciate. However, they they do have a, a new S30V. They keep coming back to it. And S30V is a fine, fine steel, don't get me wrong. Uh, but like with the uh, with the military too, which man, when is that going to be shipping? I want to know. Uh, but putting S30V on that long awaited revamping is a strange choice to me. Anyway, that's the little native going lightweight. All right, next up, Tops Knives. You know, they have this tradition of uh, putting into production designs created by their employees. They're employees that are not designers. And this new one is cool this is coming from uh, a an employee in their logistics and procurement department called anya or anna i don't know i put i i, I exotified it it's anna and uh, anna has created this clip point uh meat or uh, animal hunting processing knife <laughs> you can tell i'm a hunter huh? um but you can tell from the curved blade that's what this is for the curved blade and the size that's a 3.88, so nearly four inch, 154 cm blade, and uh, it has been in development since 2019. I think that's when she first uh, designed it, and it's been uh, in and out of research and development and tweaking. And finally, here it is uh, with that beautiful high vis uh, G10, that orange G10, uh, which is an important feature. Uh, a lot of people think in field uh, processing knives because. You're picking up the knife, you're using it, putting it down, picking it up, putting it down. And uh, something could get easily lost in all of the brush and dead leaves of the woods uh, if it doesn't have some high visibility uh, aspect to it. Just looking at it, it looks like it's an ergonomic dream. It looks like it will fit the hand so, so nicely. And uh, and then you have all of that curve for um, for processing for skinning and all of that and i like the idea of the clip point it looks like a good place to put your forefinger as you do all that and and i've never done it i have never field uh, processed game but i've watched it and i've seen how people do it and it seems like they usually have their finger right up towards the tip of the blade you don't want to puncture any guts and foul the meat um but that uh that clip there looks like a great spot to rest the finger as you do so. So looking forward to this. Um, I, I I think it's cool. This this person, Anna, uh, was not really that into knives and then working at Tops over the years. Uh, but it looks like she really got into it because she designed a beautiful knife. Also, it comes in a really nice looking black leather sheath. So that's coming from Tops. The Field Dog. And their latest in the employee designed uh, knives. Last up, I just want to uh, talk about knife rights. Our, our our good friends over at Knife Rights, Doug Ritter, uh, has uh, is now suing the state of California. Thank you. Someone's got to sue California for, <laughs> but he's suing them for a very uh, specific uh, reason. And I'm just going to read this uh, one little paragraph from the Knife Rights website. In its complaint, the plaintiffs allege that the state's ban is unconstitutional. Of course, the plaintiff here is knife rights. 
and said that there can be no quote unquote, there can be no question that knives are arms protected under the plain text of the Second Amendment. And indeed, the Supreme Court made clear, uh, made clear that the Second and Fourteenth Amendments protect the right to acquire, possess, and carry arms for self-defense and all other lawful purposes inside and outside the home. Unquote. In fact, automatic knives that are banned in California are widely legally possessed in at least 43 of 50 states. Doug Ritter and his attorneys over there, uh, man, they are brilliant and they are relentless. They are pit bulls. And I love that. That's the, that's, <laughs> this is going to be an, a controversial statement, but that's the one area where I really do love pit bulls uh, when they fight like this for our knife rights. Uh, if you saw the dog walking video, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I really love that they're going after California. California, man, uh, such a beautiful state. I mean, I, I, I question whether I've been to a more uh, beautiful piece of land uh, as California, but their governance is disastrous. Uh, we all know that. And um, it's good to see uh, Doug Ritter and Knife Rights going head to head with with a state that's not in its right head. Uh, forgive me, I know if you're listening from California, you might agree with me, and uh, this is certainly not saying anything about the citizens of California. I'm talking about the governance of California. It's just off the rails. And here is uh, a, an area where uh, a change can be made. It's been made in 43 other states, and, uh, you know, I, I would say that this is a big fish to fry, and I'm glad to see that uh, that Doug Ritter is turning up the heat on California. So we will keep our eye on that as we do all knife rights issues. Uh, if you want to help support that, uh, you know you can go to knife rights anytime and support them. You don't have to do it just during the ultimate steal, though that is uh, the time where you do benefit uh, and, and win knives, uh, but go over to Knife Rights and uh, and plunk down some cash and, and help them in the fight. All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at the state of the collection. I got two really cool new knives, and they both happen to be full tang. And then we're going to get to my full tang favorites. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at theknifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at theknifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Okay, first up in the state of the collection is a knife uh, from a company that I can't believe it took me this long to acquire a knife. Um, but it's a T-Kel knife, and this is the one that originally caught my eye. T-Kel knives, um, they specialize in combat and self-defense style knives, and this one was the one that really... Man, it shook me up when I saw it because it's a triple-edged Warncliffe. Triple-edged Warncliffe. Yes, I said it twice. Uh, it, it This is the Guardian from t -Kel Knives. And this knife is not exactly uh, like all the other t -Kel Knives in that it has a very short grind. I'm going to bring this over to the other camera here. Um, so we can get a, a a different look at it. It is a very sharp and very nasty knife. You've got an edge on the top, on the front, and on the bottom here, and uh, on the main cutting edge. But if, as you can see, the bevels are very shallow, very shallow. And to quote Tim Kell, this is not for shaving arm hair or cutting paper. This is for um, putting holes in people. And big ones as quickly as possible to get them off your person in a in a self-defense situation. Um, I am really impressed with this knife and um, I'm going to have to do some some sort of testing on this besides paper because I have done the standard slash it paper thing. And yeah, it works great, but so does uh, so do other things. I really want to test 
how this diamond like tip punctures. Um, it is wicked. I ordered it with the um, Black Hawk pattern um, handle, and that's alternating black and purple. I just think it looks beautiful. And then Tim sent along um, his sentry grip, and he makes this sentry grip for other knives. It's the um, ringed sort of karambit uh, style handle, and you can swap them on, and, and that ring is G10. You can see how the ring um, is canted out over the full tang, so it's centered on the handle. Um, just beautiful uh, for usage and for um, this sort of surety in hand. I think I might be going back to just the plain handle, though, because it does leave a it does have a smaller footprint there and it does make it easier for me to carry the way i carry it though this is this is something i'm not carrying in my usual three o'clock position i'm i've been carrying it so far scout style on the front and um putting on that extra ring throws off the balance just a little um and uh but man it's very cool and and if you haven't noticed he did have my logo etched in. He did etch my logo in there. There you go. Catches the light right there, which I really appreciate. Um, man, what an interesting guy. We just did an interview with Tim Kell, uh, which will be coming up uh, this coming Sunday. And uh, he's he's an awesome dude. I had a, such a good time talking with him. And they have he he designs and makes a wide breadth of self defense and combat knives. And um, man, just scratching the surface with this one. Now, if this style bevel, if if you just can't get behind that because you're going to be using your knives for other things as well, um, you know, uh, like cutting cheese and maybe not cutting cheese, but you know what I mean, uh, slicing things, this might not be the way to go. A lot of his other knives are thin and slicey and and have the qualities of knives that are that are a little less self defensey even though they are all bent in that direction. Um, also, he's done a lot of cool collaborations. That push push knife he's made with Steve Tarani is very cool looking. And then he's got one with a gentleman, Imri uh, Morgenstern, who's a, a famous uh, Israeli Defense Force uh, soldier, a top tier guy. And they um, created a knife called the Sapper. Uh, for digging around in the ground and and finding mines. That just looks so cool. Uh, so keep your eye on TKL Knives and keep your eye on the Knife Junkie podcast for an interview with TKL, with Tim Kell. Uh, next up, uh, a young gentleman sent me a knife. He said, can I send this to you to check out? I said, of course you can. And uh, it is the Shed Knives Knife. Now, Shed Knives is a company... Um, Born in a shed. I love that because uh, that's where probably most knife companies are born. And um, it, this is an 18 year old man who's got a, um, a a nice catalog of knives already to his name and uh, has already done improvements on various models. This model here is the 2023 uh, Tonto. And it, to me, looks like a reverse Tonto. I have already taken this out and banged it up. I'm, I'm uh, going to be posting shorts throughout the week of this. Uh, my daughter's helped me shoot. Uh, we had a project. We. It is like we. My daughter has a project for school, a science fair project. And we, she's making charcoal filters for filtering the stream water we have uh, close by. And uh, we had to make charcoal, so that means we had to make kin we had to make uh, fire. And so I used this to do um, to do feather sticking, and I used this for batoning through wood, and it was awesome. It worked so well. This knife is uh, a beast, the proverbial beast we all talk about. Uh, it is about three sixteenths thick, uh, one fifty four cm blade steel. Uh, you know I love one fifty four cm. And uh, it's got jimping, and, and it also has a shallow grind, somewhat like the Tim Kell knife, uh, though it is a higher, slicier grind. It really makes this thing great for batoning. I mean, it was just popping logs, uh, and not logs. You know, you can't span very much with that three-inch cutting edge. But once you get it down to a, you, you've quartered the wood, this thing flies through it and did a really great job. And then the edge itself 
is wickedly sharp and very, very acute. Now, if you notice the tip is a little blunted, that was my stupid fault. Yes, I can be dumb with my knives and you know that the tips uh, frequently pay for my stupidity. I, I, I was like, I bet I could throw this <laughs> into, my, into my knife throwing target. And of course you can throw anything at a knife throwing target. It doesn't make it a knife, uh, a throwing knife. I did throw it, it did stick in and then I did it again and it dropped and somehow found a rock uh, under the ground because it it went straight in like this chunk, and it found a little rock and I little I dinged the front so that it did not come like that um, I, but I am going to uh, fix the tip just to make it acute again um, you've got this protruding back uh, tang which normally I don't go for but normally that's because I like the option of capping the pommel with my thumb in this sort of mo for for this sort of motion uh, incidentally that works great the way the way it's shaped it actually fits perfectly but also i don't find myself uh needing to use this knife in that way i don't think uh, i did in one of my videos use it to uh, smash and bash a portion of the log and dislodge a piece of the log I, you know i didn't think it was not going to do that it's a solid piece of 154 cm steel, but it, it did an awesome job. I'm very impressed uh, by this guy's work, and I'm sorry I, to call him this guy. I have forgotten his name. It's right over there on a note, um, but I will be doing a full video on this. So beautifully done, Shed Knives. Uh, I, I wish you a long and prosperous uh, life making knives. They're only gonna get better from here, and man, this is pretty damn sweet. Now he said, <clears throat> In his letter, he's going to be moving from hand-shaped G10 handles to CNC-shaped G10 handles and uh, said that he'll send me a, a set to check out. So I look forward to seeing how they differ. You can see that these are handmade and uh, nothing wrong with that. I love the history of a handmade knife, and uh, but we'll see how those new scales work. Um, so there it is, the Shed Knives. Check out Shed Knives, especially if you're outdoorsy and have any sort of outdoor use. You, you can see how the Tang is proud of the scales all the way around. And when I first saw that, I thought, oh, that might be uncomfortable. It feels great in hand. This really is a nicely, uh, has really nice ergonomics. So do check out Shed Knives. All right, I'm going to take this reverse Tonto and put it over here. Uh, sorry, man. I think it's a reverse Tonto. <laughs> You're like, I'm the one who designed it and made it. Okay, so I want to talk about some of my full tang favorites here. Now, I have a lot of full tang knives. And, um, you know, to say favorites, I guess they might rotate a bit. But I want to talk about full tang knives because in using that shed knife, um, this past weekend, it really occurred to me how I would feel very uncomfortable doing some of the stuff, some of the, I'm not going to say abuse, I'll just say hard use, I was putting that knife through. Um, I have a lot of nice uh, other sort of knives like like this. This is the Boone 2 from um, Bark River Knives. And it is a, a stick tang knife so that the tang of that blade um, right after the guard here is very thin and it's, and it goes all the way down to the butt of the knife, to the pommel. And then you put the, uh, the ring, the rings of leather over it. And then that aluminum pommel, and then you fasten it and it is strong. It is a classic style design. Uh, there's, you know, nothing wrong with it. It is, it is, you probably could do plenty of batoning and that kind of thing but it does not give me the full confidence of a full tang. It's just less metal in the handle. Same goes for a tang like this. In the, um, here, I'll pull it out. What am I doing here? In the, the Natchez Bowie by Cold Steel, this has a cable tang, which interestingly enough is, has been proven to be quite strong, a quite a strong uh, style tang where you have a stick tang coming off the blade to about center handle. And then on the, on the handle, you have a, um, uh, a cable, like a steel cable, braided steel cable soldered on here and then soldered onto 
a uh, threaded piece of metal here, and then it's all bolted into the pommel back there. You might ask, why would you do that? Uh, actually, it, it's, it has proven to be very strong also in, in the way cold steel makes them anyway. And you do that to reduce um, impact when you're using that thing to say chop wood or do anything that requires impact that cable tang in there, that piece of cable absorbs a lot of the shock. And so that's a benefit there, but it does not leave you with the same confidence as say this full tang knife. This is the Western Bowie by Cold Steel. And ever since I got it, I have been crazy about this knife, using it uh, outside, but also practicing with it uh you know with my Kali and um and then my version of Bowie knife fighting which I've sort of ascertained through watching other people and reading some um reading some texts texts on the subject it's it's based kind of on saber fighting um and this design of course is based on the classic western uh, style Bowie the western 40 W49 and you can see how the tang is just coming up through the handle and it, it is a blade. The, the whole thing is one piece and then everything is applied to it. Uh, the, the, the guard is slid down over the, over the tang and then, and then secured on by the, by the scales here. Uh, just a really strong design. And to me, this one is an absolute beauty. It is an absolute beauty, and I think that it, there is some classic menace to this knife. Uh, you see this knife, it looks like a cowboy has it on his hip, and uh, of course, it's ready for use in, in all sorts of ways, whether it's camp chores or fighting, you know, like those are the only two ways. I guess you could dress game with it, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? It seems like it might be big. You might have to grip it way up here to do so, but... Uh, the strength that you get from the full tang is just pure confidence in hand. That sounds like an ad. Pure confidence in hand. Uh, but this first one uh, in this full tang cavalcade is the Cold Steel Western Bowie. A favorite of mine here. Um, next up comes from a, 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 a custom maker, Dylan Grace. The Dylan Grace Blade Company, DG Blade Co. I know you know him. He's prolific on uh, Instagram and does some really interesting um, knives here. This one here is his Warney scalpel, his Warncliffe scalpel, and it's a little guy. Here, let me see if I can get this camera to focus. It's, it's, it's giving me a little, little, little guff today. Here, why don't I come over to this camera so you can see the beauty of this uh, Buckeye Burl handle. Uh, Buckeye Burl, as we know, Burl is very rare and, uh, you know, uh, valued very highly. So when I saw this, I bought this at Blade Show 2021 and asked him what kind of Burl it was. He said, Buckeye. I'm from the Buckeye State originally, Ohio. I had to get it. Uh, but I always had my eye on these. He's got a number of different really cool nucks and large blades. And some of them are, are really, uh, you know, big and robust, but this, this little scalpel blade just got me. He has it in a number of different shapes, but the Warncliffe seemed to make the most sense. This is a great utility uh, blade. As you can see, you use that just like you would any sort of uh, mat knife or, or box cutter. Uh, so if I were in a job where I had to open up a lot of boxes, like when I used to work in a warehouse at a paint shop, this would have been a dream. Of course, at that time, I never knew about that this guy didn't exist and I couldn't have afforded it. But if I had that kind of job now, I would spend the 150 bucks or, or whatever this guy, I can't remember what this cost, uh, to get this and use this all day long opening up boxes. Uh, not only is the knife beautiful, this is forged. He, he does forged uh, work here. Not only is the knife beautiful and very, very um effective for use but the sheath he does these leather sheaths that are, are are like kydex where he wet molds the leather 
and then he has a he has a, a process that he's not shy about showing off. Uh, he does show people how he does this in a number of different videos, but it locks in like Kydex. Here, I'm going to do it in front of the microphone so you can hear it. You hear that? That snap? The knives actually snap into leather. I, I have not seen anyone else do this. Now, I've had, I have many blades with uh, the sort of pouch style sheath where where it is wet molded around the knife and it fits in there nicely. But this, I mean, this is next level and that's not an expression I like, but this is definitely next level. It snaps in there. Um, and yes, it is full tang. So it is small, but you could go to town with this knife uh, where I wouldn't feel if this were a stick tang being so small, I would not feel that way because uh, because the handle itself is about the size of an ordinary stick tang um, knife. So if you reduce that by 50% and had it running down the center, it would not be nearly as strong. Um, so yeah, this one is definitely a favorite. I would, uh, if you're interested in this, definitely check out um, DG Blade Co. He makes some really cool stuff. Dylan Grace down there in Florida. All right, next up is a production knife. This is the off-grid knives. Uh, this is the Backcountry Coyote. I have another, I have the original Backcountry in the blackout version. And he made, uh, carry of off-grid knives, made a whole bunch of, of improvements with this knife uh, in, in making it a, uh, in, in its second iteration here. And he really has rounded out the handle nicely, <clears throat> and it has wonderful ergonomics. Feels great in hand, but the stout and sturdiness of this full tang is what makes this a true, <clears throat> excuse me, a true outdoors knife. Um, I always quip that it looks like a fighting knife to me in that blade shape. Um, and yes, you could definitely uh, put it to that uh, to that use here, but with the with the use of a, a, a camp knife, and that's what he designed this for, and that's what he uses his knives for. He's a camper, camper, adventurer, outdoors type. Uh, that full tang is a definite, definite benefit here. Um, yeah, love that recurve um, <clears throat> and the handle, the comfortable, comfortable handle. Also, they have upgraded their sheaths to the taco uh, style. And uh, they really, really have a nice snap to them. Here, I'll bring this over here uh, so you can hear that. And just a nice snap. Beautiful, beautiful blade. Uh, we do a, we have a, an affiliate link with Offgrid. So if you're interested in Offgrid knives, use the affiliate link. That's the knifejunkie.com slash Offgrid. And you can get one of these. And it will put a couple of shekels in our pocket, help keep the lights on here at the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm, I'm glad he gave us this affiliate link. Uh, I love his knives. See? <laughs> it is kind of a fighter looker, fighter looking knife. That is the off-grid knives um, backcountry coyote. Now, coyote, of course, is referring to the color. And they have a whole coyote line. And to me, to my eye, they're the most handsome of the off-grid knives. Speaking of handsome, this little devil, uh, this was my first custom knife ever. And uh, this is a sheath my brother made for it. But this is the Attention to Detail Mercantile or A2D Medium Fighter. And man alive, is it a beauty. Uh, it is a bayonet style blade. So a, only a partial top edge uh, is sharp. And then the full length of the of the rest of the blade is sharp, obviously, and it is hollow ground. Um, I ordered it with the with those beautiful handle scales. These are um, these are what do you call that? Tortoise shell uh, imitation tortoise shell. You know, I don't think you can actually do real tortoise shell anymore. Um, uh, with the brass rivets and the brass liner. And the thing I love about this full tang, yes, you get the strength of a full tang. This is S35VN, but I love this feature. It is crowned. Uh, the whole spine and including where the jimping is 
and then the tang. It's crowned and sits proud of the the scales. So it feels great in hand, and it just looks great in hand. It looks it looks great with that crown spine, but such a beautiful knife. This will always be one of my favorites, and I don't carry this enough. It's just over my overall length. I can't really carry this very well uh, concealed, or I should say in the waistband, the way I like to carry it. Uh, but if I were to, if I were a classy assassin, that's what I kind of call this. It's like a classy assassin's knife. Um, I know Kaiser makes their assassin. It's a little EDC folder, but this this is really what this would be. It's it's like a. If anyone has seen the movie The Highest Art, uh, also called Exposure, I think uh, it's a, a a knife fighting movie with Peter Coyote from the early '90s. This knife would have fit beautifully into that movie. Gorgeous, gorgeous. One of my favorite full tang knives here. Now, one of my favorite full tang knives that I carry very much on the regular is the Voodoo. The Voodoo, this is from uh, Kramer Custom Knives. That's Eric Kramer, not Robert Kramer. Uh, Robert Kramer is a chef's knife maker, I believe. But uh, this is Eric Kramer, and he makes some absolutely beautiful and very purpose-driven um, fixed blade knives that uh, are for, for carry. I mean, if you notice how thin this is, it makes for a great, great carry knife, especially if you carry the way I do, which is right up next to the body in the waistband. Uh, that thin style really, really accelerates in. Well, it just makes it easy to carry. And if it's easy to carry, you're going to carry it more often. And uh, so that's why this one gets so much. Now, the the uh, I know you, I'm always talking hog tooth uh, because they are my favorite fixed blades. Uh, for carry, but this one uh, is right up there. This is 154 cm, deeply hollow ground. Uh, I asked for that secondary edge on the on the swedge there, and uh, he obliged beautifully. Now that edge, naturally, it does it has a much more obtuse approach, so it's more of a splitting, tearing, pressure cut kind of uh, edge for for knife fighting. It's great for trapping, that kind of thing. Uh, but the primary edge here is so thin and so slicey. Uh, so it's a nice contrast. You do have, <clears throat> you do have that sort of uh, obtuse and robust edge on top, and then that super thin slicey edge on the bottom. And that upsweep. I just did a short of this one uh, that a lot of people have commented on. A lot of people love this knife. And um, yeah, I do too. I think it's... Uh, outstanding and he calls it a persian i call it a bowie or a clip point um but who's you know who are you gonna trust him or your lying eyes so uh <laughs> uh very nice persian knife from uh from eric kramer okay next up this was a gift from my wife uh i told you earlier how much i love my wife and uh, there are many many reasons many 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 reasons and this is a minor one but it's definitely a one. And uh, this is the, the Topps uh, Wild Pig Hunter. I put it down here with the sheath because that full grain leather sheath is just so beautiful. Man, I love when Topps does leather. So here's the knife. And uh, it's barely fitting on the screen here. There it is. Uh, this knife is full tang, quarter inch thick, but it has a distal taper. Um, and really kind of, well, it, it remains thick right down to the point. Actually, it's not so much of a distal taper. It's very, very much more at the point, but you get this, uh, very rigid build here with, uh, with this swedge. It's not a swedge that comes to a gradual, uh, full thickness. It, it's a swedge that drops down and then has a 90 degree turn and then, and then goes to the full thickness. So it's kind of like an I-beam, super, super rigid for, you know, jamming through the tough hide of a charging boar. Um, at least that's how I see it. I know I know most boar hunting uh, with a knife or with a spear happens uh, with dogs, you know, holding the pig down and then you go up and you shiv it. Not like it's easy. I'm not saying, I'm not even suggesting that. 
Uh, it's a very, very dangerous way to hunt. And actually, it is a way I've always wanted to hunt. I would love to, you know, in in I guess this is a bucket list item, but it would be cool to go hog hunting with a spear. I always thought it'd be cool with a spear. It'd be a bit like Odysseus. Uh, you know, he's got that scar on his leg from boar hunting. And uh, and uh, that's the way when he's dressed up, when he's disguised by Athena to look like an old man, that's how his old nursemaid knows it's him from that scar on his uh, leg from the boar hunt. When he was 12, you know, they built people stouter back in the day. He was 12 years old uh, when that when he went boar hunting and got attacked and, and gored by a boar. Anyway, I, I, I digress. Uh, this is a extremely strong knife for built for a purpose that, man, you, I, I, I challenge you to tell me something more uh, rough on a knife than, than sticking it in a charging, you know, 300 pound bore. Uh, it, no stick tang knife is going to stand up to that, or at least you're not going to want the doubt of having a stick tang knife. Uh, here it is full thickness right at the um, where the guard and the blade meet the handle. And that is usually the weakest point of a knife. And you've got that full thickness. I've never taken the handle scales off of this to see if there's any weight relief in the middle. I don't think those weight relief pockets reduce the strength of a knife by much, if any. But something tells me that is a full, full tang, meaning uh, not only a true full tang, uh, but no pockets. I, I'm pretty sure there are no pockets just from the weight, uh, but I should, I should take it apart and see. Um, do I want to? Not really, but you can. You can take these apart just in case blood or viscera or any other sort of uh, material seeps in the middle there. You don't want it to rust. Uh, this is a, a, a 1095 blade, but they did use that... Um, acid rain treatment and you can see a, a bit of a hummoon there pretty cool um very classy package this one does not get uh, as much attention uh from me as do my other knives but i i always you know look at it and and uh, marvel at it it's a very cool knife they made a black version of this with a kydex sheath which looks nice but just nothing quite like this leather this and the look of that gray blade with that leather, mm -mm -mm, very nice. But would make a great tactical knife. I know the Russians have a design exactly like that that's used for um, tactical, you know, military purposes. So if if you if you fancy that, you can get the black version of this with the Kydex sheath, and uh, and you're good to go in the tactical sense. Okay, next up is a, another custom. This is from one of my favorites, Dirk Pinkerton. I love his designs, you know, for production, and I love his custom handmade work. This is the Cave Bear in a, in a great sheath. This is the Cave Bear, such a beautiful Pakal style knife. Or maybe you just call it a double-edged Persian knife if you, if you hold it like this. But to me, um, this is all day long, a Pakal style knife, double-edged and beautifully ground by Dirk Pinkerton. He just does a stellar job uh, behind the grinder. Very well respected by his peers for that skill, freehand skill at a grinder. Super sharp. Now, something about this that uh, it's similar to the, to the hog hunter there, or to the wild pig hunter. This is a knife that is meant, it's going to sound ugly, but there's no good way to put it. This is meant to, to go into a moving target that's uh, not cooperative. And that's the last place you want your knife to break or to snap at the handle. Um, and so that full tang, um, full profile tang, meaning it's coming all the way down, all the way around. Everything you see there, uh, if you remove that handle scale, is metal. And that is just going to give you the strongest results. Do I think that my stick tang boon two that I showed you is going to just break? No. Do I think that that cable tang uh, notches is just going to break? No. But the full assurance of that full tang with something like this is, uh, man, it's extremely welcome. This is also a great excuse to show off this knife in particular, which I, I just find 
it's it's just beautiful. It is a beautiful uh, knife, so well ground and so um, symmetrical. And then with that black blade paired with the happy handle, it just, uh, I don't know, something about that just is so pleasing. So this is definitely one of my full tang favorites, the cave bear. I know it comes up a lot, but what am I supposed to do? Not talk about it? <laughs> All right, next up from Murray Carter, uh, the great and powerful Murray Carter. Uh, he is a very interesting dude. Came from Canada at 18, moved to Japan and paired himself up with a local the, the local knife maker, the local smith, they not only made knives, they made tools, actually primarily tools. But while there, he learned a 750 year old process and became uh, the, I think, the 40th in a line, uh, 700 years long in that town, making the tools and the knives. And the knives are astounding. This uh, is made with a very old style of steel folding here, Murray Carter. This was a gift from Murray Carter himself, which I'm very, very grateful for. And this was the knife he had around his neck when I first met him at Blade Show. I remember because I was I was I was peeping it. And uh, after after uh, I spoke with him on the show, he ended up sending this to me. And uh, man, it is a beauty. But. He has an interesting setup at his shop where he has uh, numerous uh, apprentices and they are all great knife makers in their own right. They come into his shop and learn his ancient techniques and perfect them and then make designs all sort of harmonizing with his designs. So uh, they make versions of his neck knife and versions of uh, his other knives but they put their own personal spin on it and their own personal stamp on it. So it's coming out of the uh, Carter Custom Cutlery Forge, but it's by a different knife maker. This one is by the man himself. And so it's a, man, it, it, it is a great honor to have this knife, um, especially considering it was, it was his and it was good enough for him to wear around his neck. And I should say, Carrie, it's not, it's not a fashion item. Look at the waves in that steel. Just, just beautiful. This is one of probably my most valuable knives, come to think of it. Uh, and, and then the way that full tang is incorporated so perfectly, it feels like one material. If I'm not looking at it and I rub my hands around like this, that red carbon fiber, those black and red spacers, it all feels like one solid piece. This is truly an astounding knife. I mean, it is It is something. This is a, I mean, for me personally, this is a once in a lifetime knife. I, you know, this is worth a lot of money and I'm not, not sure it's so easy to get one of his knives uh, from his atelier. So uh, I'm very, very honored to have this knife. The Murray Carter neck knife for such a, a beautiful knife for such an uh, iconic knife, uh, which it is. Um, it's got a very generic name. It's just the neck knife. So there you have it. All right. Second to last in this list of full tang beauties here is one of my favorites because this gets a lot of carry. Now, since I've been carrying the Nova one, uh, I've been I've been much more uh, apt to carry that. But this is the Ruffian by Hogtooth Knives. Um, what do I have to say about this? A harpoon clip point to beat the band. It's 154 cm, deeply hollow ground. It's got that beautiful acid etch. It's got amazing ergonomics, including awesome jimping. Uh, if you're a jimping guy, Hogtooth does it exactly right. And it feels great there. This is a, a true custom in that I ordered it, uh, just exactly like this. Some of these other customs, like the Murray Carter or like the um, like the the Cave Bear, I didn't order. I just bought after they were or, or acquired after they were made. Um, you know that I did not buy that Murray Carter. Uh, so, in other words, this one was made exactly that how I wanted it. That, the natural canvas micarta with blue liners for a little bit of pop there, a little bit of contrast, and it just melts in the hand. 
this this knife just melts in the hand any grip you want uh reverse grip even in this sort of pakal grip with the edge in it feels great uh and like this this is one of those knives that um everyone looks at and they're like oh is that a winkler and uh i i think i think I think Winkler knives have a uh, uh, have a certain look, and it's 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 a I don't want to it's a look that is uh, it's sort of a universal style. And this to me, I, I I never thought that it looks like a Winkler, but a lot of people think so. And then a lot of people say the same thing about this knife, and they look very very different. One you know, uh, I think it's the long swedge. I think it's the long swedge that gets people to think Winkler knives. Anyway, this is about this knife. Um, 154 cm, as I mentioned, stout as hell, but a light. This is a good carry. This is the this is about the largest I carry on my belt, uh, you know, in the waistband here. And my most watched video is a short, and it's me holding uh, one, three. So five inches. Uh, this is the one that I showed how I carry in the waistband and um, people are always asking, what is that knife? What is that knife? So I think I need to do a short just with this knife and uh, mention that video. So, so that that can preclude my answering every comment at this knife is. Um, every time not chase of hog tooth knives gets orders for it because I think it really resonates with people. Um, that long clip, that wedge, and a diamond-like point, which makes it so good at thrusting and breaching materials. Very, very sharp knife. He does great work. You don't need me to say that anymore today because uh, I'm always talking about Matt Chase. He's also become a friend uh, in this whole process of uh, collaborating on making the Nova One. So... All right, last up, this one, let me get it. Uh, uh, this is the full tank. If you're wondering what that sound was, if you're just listening, it was me hefting the knife. It wasn't anything else. Uh, this is a big, big knife. This is the Work Tough Gear Puzan Predator Hunter Bowie. Um, I'll try and fit it on screen there. It's 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 a, a nearly two pound knife and uh, I have come to the conclusion that though you could do wicked, nasty damage with it, it is not a fighting knife. It's too heavy. It's kind of like, or it's not a fighting knife for me. You want a knife that you're fighting with to be light and lively in hand. You want to be able to move it where you need to go, um, you know, especially if you're dueling like I'm doing with the camera right now. Um, this knife is more like a battle axe, you know, a battle axe, very effective in battle, but the recovery after a swing is more than a sword, a uh, sword where you have the weight in the pommel and the tip is is moving around uh, lightly and easily. Uh, it's easy to recover after a swing. With a battle axe, it's got all that weight up front. After a swing, it takes a readjustment to swing again. Well, that's kind of what you're dealing with with this knife. Uh, this is, man, this is an ultimate. I'm not gonna say it's the ultimate, but it's an ultimate outdoor camp um woods knife uh i for the first time this past weekend when i was out there with the shed knife uh doing the feather sticks and making kindling uh for my daughter's project i had this one out and at long last got a chance to uh baton with it and actually what i was doing was not batoning i did a little bit of that but what i was doing was setting up the log and just kind of dropping it and You've got something very interesting here. Uh, you've got a long, gradual um, bevel here that gets extremely thin and sharp, uh, extremely thin for a big knife like this, and very sharp. But you get that wedge-like action at the top, and then you have that fuller in there for rigidity. Um, I, I don't know. I just think this is a nearly unbeatable knife, but part of it is the handle. The handle is just so perfectly designed with the um with the bird's beak here and the horse hoof pommel here so that that extends here i'm going to bring this up to the main camera so you can see what i'm talking about here that extends um 
far beyond the hook where your pinky is and that allows for this kind of action um, so it this stops it right here and uh, gives you just great shopping action would i want this with any other tank i'm not going to put that edge towards my face would i want this with any other the, any other kind of tang no way no way because this is though about the same length as the not jazz bowie this is just screaming out begging for something other than the fighting purpose that's that not jazz bowie is a fighter this is just uh this is an axe replacement this is instead of a hatchet this is what you're going to bring so full tang is absolutely necessary and though this is brand new to me um i i feel like this one is already a, a, a full tang favorite this and the t kel guardian or yeah the t kel guardian uh, which is somewhere this is also brand new to me but also makes the list uh, since i showed it off before you know i'll just go over it again real quickly but it is a a full slab of metal this one does not have weight relief in the handle and being so it's just super strong i was talking to tim kell and he said that he uh, uses his or recently used his to pry a fence board back into place he has a fence with the slats like this and he had to one was kind of warped and pushed back behind the others he stuck his guardian in there and just and and just sorry for the sound effect popped it back into place and uh, you would not feel confident doing that with a stick tang so um really for ultimate strength and heft you know it does give you a little bit of extra weight uh, in the handle which can be good you cannot beat a full tang so there you have it ladies and gentlemen my 11 i guess favorite full tang knives in my collection um does this change? Does this rotate? Yeah, there are some times where I like the Prather War Bowie better, better than that Wild Pig Hunter. But the point is, uh, for fixed blade knives, for me, it's full tang is the way to go. All right. Thanks for joining me on this uh, episode. Be sure to tune in on Sunday for my interview with Tim Kell of T. Kell Knives and uh, becoming a patron. Uh, becoming a patron now, you get early access to the interview extras, which are always awesome. I always look forward to the conversations we have after the main conversation because things come up in the main conversation that I can't get to. And sometimes those are things that I don't want in the wider, broader uh, podcast release. So do check that out. Well, thanks for joining me. And Jim, thanks you as well <laughs> uh, for him. Jim working his magic behind the switcher. I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.